Here is another practice problem. Uh, I'm going to put all the important information on the paper too, but a spring is connected to an unstretched a spring has an unstretched length of 8 centimeters and a spring constant of 22 newtons per meter. The spring is connected to a vertical support with a 200 gram mass hanging below. The support is the origin and the mass is pulled over to a position 0.1 negative 0.10 meters and released. What's the net force? What's the uh, momentum after 0.101 seconds and what's the position after 0.01 seconds. Let's get to this. Okay, so spring constant 22 newton per meter. The unstretched length L0 is 0 0.08 meters mass, the initial position, and then I want the delta time. The time is 0 0.01 seconds. So find the net force, find the position, the momentum at the after 0.01 second and the position. Let's find the uh, let's draw the a, a diagram for the net force. Here's the mass. I have two force. I'm gonna draw it right here. I have two forces. I have the downward gravitational force, mg, and then I have the spring force right here pulling in the direction of the spring, f spring. So I need to find both of those. Let's let's just write down the gravitational force first. Um, I'll call it fg. It's going to be equal to m times the vector zero negative nine point eight zero. That's g. Uh, and then I need to find the spring force. Fs is going to be equal to negative k s l hat. So this is the spring constant. That's the amount it stretched, and that's a unit vector in the direction of the spring. So let's first find the vector l. L, since I put the, the beginning of the spring right there, l is just the vector 0 0.1, negative 0.10. Right? It's the same, it's this vector. It is the position of the mass. If I want to find L hat, uh, I need to find L magnitude. L magnitude, because this is going to be uh, L divided by L magnitude, is going to be the square root of 0 0.1 squared plus 0 0.1 squared plus 0 squared. I'm going to do this all in Python in just a second. Uh, and then I can find L hat, the unit vector. It's going to be the vector L divided by the magnitude of the vector L. So I'm going to take each 0.0, I'm going to find this number, and then I'm going to take each one, 0.1 divided by that number, negative 0.1 divided by that number, and that's L hat. Now what about S? S is going to be equal to uh, the length of this vector, L, the magnitude, divided by the unstretched length, because that tells me how far it's stretched. And then I have K, I have S, I have L hat, I can find S. And then F net is just going to be equal to FS plus FG, that's a G, uh, which is going to be equal to negative K S L hat plus M G. And I'm going to do all that in Python, but that's, that's my, my net force. Now the next question is after point oh one seconds what's the momentum so I can say F net is delta P over delta T that's the momentum principle and if uh, we have a very short time interval which we do I can make the assumption that this is a constant and that would be a vector right because it's a you have to have vectors if that's true I can say F net is equal to P2 minus P1 over delta T. Now I can multiply both sides by delta T and I get P2 minus P1 uh, equals, and I had P1 was zero. I did say it released from rest, right? So P1 is zero, zero, zero kilogram meters per second. So P2 minus P1 is gonna be equal to F net, which I calculated delta T I can solve for P2 by adding P1 to both sides. P2 equals P1 plus F net delta T. So I just have to do that operation. I take the net force, which I had, multiply by delta T, so I have to multiply each component by delta T and add this, which was zero, and I'll have P2. Okay, next part, what's the final position? So now I can say V average is approximately equal to P2 
over mass, right? Now, this is a, a, a maybe seems a complicated or crazy approximation, but it actually works very well. So this says that the momentum at the end of the time interval I just calculated is the average velocity. It's definitely not the initial momentum, which was zero. That would say the initial velocity was zero. So I'm just gonna say the average velocity is the final momentum and that I divide by its mass to get the velocity. That seems crazy, but it does indeed work. Now, if I use the definition of average velocity as delta R over delta T, I can write this as R2 minus R1 over delta T. I know R1, I'm trying to find R2. Multiply both sides by delta T, I get R2. And I'm gonna add R1. This is the same as up here. R1 plus P2 over M delta T. So we have to do these, these vector operations and they're not too bad. If you write them out, it's not too bad. But I like Python, I'm gonna do it in Python. So let's just jump over to Python and do everything in Python and then we'll all be happy, right? We're just gonna use Python as a calculator. So let me get my Python up here for a second. New trinket. Okay, so switching to the computer. So here we are. So this is GlowScript vPython. I'm gonna make it bigger so you can see. Um, bigger, that's good, I like it really big. So I'm gonna put in all my constants first. So I have K equals 22. I'm not gonna put the units. I don't really care about the units. L0 is equal to 0 0.08. Uh, M is 0 0.2. Uh, R1 is equal to the vector, something happened, the whole computer froze. Oh there, are we back? I think we're back. Okay, still recording. Vector, oops, I'm down here now. Vector 0.1, negative 0 0.10, uh, and what else do I have? Oh, DT is 0 0.01, I need G is vector. 0, negative 9.8, 0. Okay, let's calculate the net force. So I'm going to actually break it into pieces. Fg is m times g. That's all, right? If I print that, let's just print that. It, it did the vector operation for me, which was easy, but that's what I get. Uh, let's break this up for the spring force. I'm going to say S is, oh, I need L. L is just the vector R1. So let's just, I'm gonna write it out like this. 0.1, negative 0 0.10. Now S is gonna be the magnitude of L minus L0. So in uh, Python, we can take the magnitude of a vector with this mag function, so that makes things a lot nicer. Now I can calculate the spring force. Fs is negative K times the stretch times the unit vector in the direction of L. So I actually don't have to do that either. I can, there's a built-in function for that, norm L. Now let's just print it all out. So I'm gonna print, oh, lowercase, print, let's write FG equals FG. I'm gonna do it all in pieces. Print FS, the spring force, FS in Newtons print f net equals, uh, let's actually calculate f net. f net equals f s plus f g, and then I can put it right here, f net in newtons. Run that thing, and there you go. There's my gravitation force, there's my spring force, and there's my total force. That was the first part. Okay, so now let's go back over here. I need the initial momentum. I'm actually gonna call it P1. If we were doing a numerical calculation, I wouldn't do that. I'm gonna put it in here as zero, zero, zero um, because it was released from rest. Now for P2, I already, I already calculated that as an equation. It's just gonna be equal to P1 plus F net times DT. Print P2 equals P2 uh, kilogram meters per second. So you see, once you do the algebra, the, the calculation I can do in Python, because it's just, it's just numbers, right? You could get an eighth grader to do these numbers. It's not that big of a deal once you know what to put in the calculator. It's just tedious. So here's my momentum at the end of the time interval. Oh, that is small, okay. 
I was thinking this is really too big, but it's times 10 to the negative third. So that's pretty small. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now, finally, I want to find my final position. R2 is equal to R1 plus P2. I'll put it like this. P2 over M times dt. Print R2 equals R2 meters. Done. That's the final position. And you'll notice it did not move a ton, right? It was at 0.1, negative 0.1. So because I had such a small time interval, my momentum is very small, my change in position is very small. So that makes the approximation reasonable that that the momentum was was uh, that the force is constant, and I can use the final momentum. Um, and and you could totally do this in just a normal calculator like this, right? It works just fine as a calculator. It works fine as Python. I'm a Python person. I prefer Python, so that's that. Okay.